Lisa Tucky, and this is Disease Dispatch reporting live from your favorite studio in Texas. Welcome back to your favorite news segment on Outbreak Announcements. My name is Janae, and I'm joined by Kelsey and Mallory, and we are pleased to have our experts Sarah and Jasmine with us today to provide insight into our report. We have just received news of a shocking report. Let's dive in. Early June, in a California elementary school, the county health department reported 25 kids and 3 adults sickened starting from May 18th to May 22nd. Their symptoms included diarrhea, vomiting, and stomach cramps. These are not severe symptoms for some people, but they can cause discomfort in children, so they should be urgently treated. Let's take a closer look into what caused their sickness. We are now going to hear from Sarah. Our first instinct into solving this case was to test for different types of bacteria to see what was causing these symptoms. From these tests, we concluded the bacteria that had made these people sick was Salmonella. Salmonella is a bacteria pathogen and is highly infectious among elderly and children. This graph here shows the number of the new Salmonella cases. We can conclude that the people who have been exposed must have encountered on viruses on May 16 for symptoms to show on the 19th. We know these symptoms could occur later because the infection cycle is 12 to 72 hours. We asked a few relatives about any events that could that could have happened. We found out the class went to a field trip on the community garden on May 16. During this field trip, it was suspected that the factor causing these children to become sick was food. Let's take a closer look at this data from our expert, Sarah. This is the graph where it shows what the people ate, where they went, and if they came into animal contact. We can see 93% is the highest, where 26 people got sick in, at the community garden. Looking at the food, there is no specific item that would have infected the children since there is a low percentage of people who ate the food infected. Back to you and the studio. As Sarah stated, the common link between all who got sick was that they all went to a field trip to the community garden on May 16th. Since there is no clear indication of the food causing salmonella, the experts took a look at the activities the children engaged in during the field trip to see if any of these could have caused the salmonella outbreak. This is the data of the attack rates among sick and healthy people. As we can see, People that played in the sandbox have a higher attack rate and low attack rate for those who didn't. From this, we can conclude that it was a sandbox that spread salmonella to the children. According to the experts' results, the chickens in the garden scoop have the same strain of salmonella as the children. After contacting the workers at the garden, we were informed that the chickens escaped the coop earlier that day. The guilty poultry were found playing around in the sandbox for extended periods of time when they escaped from their coop, causing the children who were playing in and ingesting the sand to become sick. So the case has been solved. The chickens from the community garden were responsible. We are wishing for a speedy recovery for all those who are sick. When salmonella bacteria are ingested, they pass through a person's stomach and colonize the small and large intestine. There, the bacteria multiply. It can invade the tissues of the GI tract and spread to the bloodstream. Usually, these symptoms will go away in four to seven days. Now, to some advice from our experts, Sarah and Jasmine, on how to avoid catching salmonella. Thank you, Kelsey. Some tips on avoiding salmonella are to wash your hands thoroughly immediately after touching any poultry or anywhere where they might have roamed. If soap and water are not available, hand sanitizer may be used. Anyone can become ill with salmonella, but people who, have most, who are most vulnerable to it are those 65 and older. Children younger than 5 and people with weak immune systems from medical conditions. You should also clean any equipment or materials used to raise or care for chickens outside of your house, such as feeding containers and cages. Make sure you do not let younger children or anyone with weak immune systems handle live chickens or ducks. Specific treatments and antibiotics are unnecessary. 
but drinking lots of water is highly recommended if diarrhea is still present. Do not kiss or cuddle the birds or let them touch your mouth or consume food or drinks around live poultry. And certainly do not let live poultry inside the house where food is prepared or give us gifts to young children. Cut. Is that too fast? No, perfect. As Sarah stated, the common link. One, two, three. Three, two, one. Action. A rolling. Action. Sarah. Cut. Go to your pace. You guys ready? Oh, oh, yeah. Action. Cut. And then now, okay. you have your line? Mm -hmm. Do we start a new recording or do you? You can keep it. Okay. And action.